Hey YouTube, this is Kevin Bowling of Bowling Small Engine, and today on the table I have an opposed Briggs & Stratton twin cylinder carb. I recently had a YouTuber request that I make a video uh, to basically get, just help everyone out there on these particular types of carburetors. Note guys that what you're seeing here on the table is a three screw um, system instead of the four screw system that Briggs made. There are two guys, keep that in mind. Uh, this of course is the three screw. What I mean by that is if you look at the fuel pump area, there are actually three screws that hold the fuel pump in place. On others guys, there is actually four. So keep that in mind guys. Um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and sit down and show you guys what these parts are, uh, what you need to ask for if you need to repair okay, one of these carburetors. Uh, logically, a repair kit you know, is the way to go, but let's say you take it apart and you're just looking for an individual gasket. Then you're going to actually know what that gasket's called. Uh, I know it can be very difficult, especially when you're wanting to work on something and you're going to a dealer and you're asking for a part and they're looking at you like you're completely out of your mind okay <laughs> because you really don't know what the part is even called uh, so this can further help you along okay so as I said I'm going to start off by basically just getting this carburetor out of the camera temporarily of course and I'm going to show you what these parts are individually so you'll know what they are if you have to purchase a part. Okay? I'm going to start off with this spring here. This spring is actually called a diaphragm spring. This part right here that goes on top of the spring is called a cup or a cap. Okay, so you have a diaphragm spring and the cup or cap that goes on top. This part right here is the main jet. Now guys, in all honesty, the main jet goes inside right here. It takes a five millimeter um, Allen key to pull it out. Okay. This little jet can cause you a world of problems if it isn't clean. Now I'll admit guys, I'm not reusing this carburetor. This is just for YouTube purposes, just to allow my viewers to see where these potential problems are. In all honesty, this would probably work just fine. I can look right through it and see that the hole in the passage is clear, but in all honesty as well, I would generally do a more thorough job cleaning the carburetor and all these little jets. So keep that in mind guys, but as I said, this is the main jet. Okay, this is considered a plate. Okay, it's made basically for the carburetors, a pump body, okay, which I'm going to show you momentarily, but as I said, this is considered a plate. This is the carbs pump body. Now, guys, I want to note the next parts that I'm about to show you are critical to make this fuel pump work. All right, and they are the most typically lost part in this assembly. So bear that in mind. I'm also going to show you on the pump body where these little tiny springs actually go. If you lose one of these springs, it is a pain in the butt to get one of these to run or even to expect to run properly. Okay, so I'm going to try to tilt this up, this pump body, and I'm going to show you where these springs go. As you can see in my hand, these springs are extremely tiny. And as I said, they are a pain in the butt because they fall out very, very easily. What I like to do 
is dab a little grease on the end of them and put them in their respected spot. Okay, so what I'm going to do guys, I'm going to try to show you where they go. As you see, this is the spring, and here's where they go. They consider this piece a boss, okay? So just remember that these springs, these small little valve springs, if you will, actually go on the bosses of this pump body. Now I know a lot of you would be thinking that this is a boss. This isn't a boss. This is actually just a locator, okay, for your, your carb. As you can see, this actually goes right here. So, this of course is where one spring goes on, on the pump body, and this is where the other spring would go, okay, it's right here. Now as I said guys, when I'm assembling this carburetor later, in the next video, you're going to see that I dab just a little bit of grease on these springs. I do that to help retain the springs while I'm assembling the pump body. So keep that in mind when you're watching the next video guys that you definitely need to put something on those springs to keep them from falling out. I choose grease. There are many different methods. You can use Vaseline. I've heard of people using Vaseline. Uh, you can even use really thick motor oil. It works very well as well. But I personally just use lithium grease. Just a little tiny dab of lithium grease. It works very well for me. Now, guys, I'm going to start off at this point by telling you about the float. These floats are notorious for getting little pinholes. Over the years, the gasoline will just eat up this little tiny copper uh, float and you'll get little pinholes in them and before you know it your carburetor's flooding and you're wondering what in the world is going on you know your engine worked just fine last week and you come out to start it and there's gas everywhere okay <laughs> or worse you've got your engine started and it just sputters and pops and shakes and surges and acts as just completely crazy all right and this is generally why there will actually be gas on the inside of one of these floats. The easiest way to identify whether you have gas in the float is to just kind of pick it up and shake it at your ear. If you hear something sloshing around on the inside of that float, then you pretty much realize at that point you need to replace that float. And I'll be honest with you, it is imperative that you do so because your engine will not run worth the crap, okay, if you don't. This is considered a plug. Now guys, this plug that you're seeing right here actually goes right here. Now earlier I had said that the pilot jet goes inside of this hole and I'll explain that guys. The pilot jet actually gets inserted into the hole and tightened up okay so all I'm doing right here is just tighten up the pilot jet on the inside as you can see pretty simple okay now I want to note guys that with this plug what I like to do because of the o-ring is I like to dab just a little bit of that lithium grease that I told you guys earlier on the threads it really seems to help, okay? Especially if you ever have to tear this back down again, and believe me, you will, okay? Within about two to three years, generally you have to put a kit in these. So bear that in mind. It's just smart practice, I guess you could say, to put just a little bit of grease on the threads as well as this little O-ring here. 
This, of course, is the inlet needle, which is used, of course, along with the float. And this is the hinge pin, which retains the float to the upper body. And this, guys, is, of course, the upper body of the carburetor. Note that there's two holes here for the hinge pin to slide into. Okay? As you can see. Now guys, while I have this upper body convenient and close, I want to stress to you guys that it is very, very, very important that this brass seat that's pressed in here is really clean, okay? It needs to be clean. Um, you don't want any kind of corrosion whatsoever, anything to restrict that passage, okay? Because this passage actually gets fed off of this passage. This tiny little passage right here is actually what feeds this passage, okay, which is your um, your fuel valve here, okay, or fuel inlet, shall I say. And it's pretty easy for them to get clogged up, okay. What I like to do is take some carb cleaner and blow back through them just to ensure that they're really clean. I'll even take a Q-tip and go down inside of it and buff it out just to make sure that there's no residual sediment that's left behind after I clean one of these carburetors. It's just a really good practice, guys. And as you can clearly see, there's also some passages here that you can spray out with carb cleaner as well. What I use typically when I'm cleaning one of these carburetors is a pen vise. Now, for those of you out there that don't really know what a pin vise is, this is what I'm referring to when I'm talking about a pin vise. You can get these online along with the little small drill indexes that typically come along with them for about six to eight dollars. Um, they come from China, but of course, guys, you can find them everywhere, okay? Um, I got the little simple set that I've got from China and I think I gave eight bucks for it and I'll be honest I have used this one little drill bit for probably going on three years and I haven't had any issues with them breaking so it's really just a matter of preference as to what kind of quality you want to get uh, I'll be completely honest with you before I had a pen vise I even used old bread ties and stripped the ends off of an old bread tie and you can feed it back through these passages just like I'm about to show you here with this pin vise, just to ensure that they're all clean. As you can see, I'm just kind of pushing it into those passages and ensuring that this upper body is clean. And I have to admit that I already realized that it is. So, this is a diaphragm. Now, if you look, you'll see that this diaphragm has tabs on it. The next gasket I'm about to show you, if you will, is also going to be considered a diaphragm, but it's for a different part of the pump body. So, that's why I'm showing you the tab um, diaphragm first. These little tabs, or valves, or some people like to call them flaps, okay, if you will, go onto this side of the pump body. Okay, so this, of course, is the pump body I was telling you about. This, of course, was the boss right here that these little valve springs get attached to. And, of course, this is the diaphragm spring and the cap or cup. hope everyone can kind of see that. You can see that I've made sure that this spring is on. I've made sure that the diaphragm spring is on and the cup or cap is on this side of the pump body. This diaphragm here, guys, actually goes on this side of the pump. Now I want to note, guys, I'm not putting this together just yet. I'm only doing this so you guys can actually see potentially how and why it's so easy to lose these little springs. 
So just keep that in mind, guys. This diaphragm goes on this side. Now, this diaphragm, guys, goes on the opposite side, but there is a gasket that gets attached to it. Now, this one is kind of adhered to the gasket that's basically underneath it over the years, and I couldn't really take it apart without tearing it. But I think I can hold it up to the camera good enough for you guys to identify its shape. Okay? and have a better understanding that this is actually two gaskets okay so as I said when you buy a kit you're gonna have this side or this gasket if you will and it will go just like this okay reason being is this plate actually gets placed like this okay so bear that in mind guys that this side of the gasket will go on the body and this side of the gasket will go on the plate This, guys, if I've already failed to mention it, is actually your idle mixture valve. And if you start your motor up and it's surging really crazy or just, you know, acting erratic, this is generally a good place to start, all right? 90% of the time, it's just some kind of little speck of dirt or... Maybe it's just a little bit of powder residue, if you will, that will make its way onto the end of this little needle and cause you to have those symptoms. And it's a simple matter of just turning the screw left or right to, uh, you know, basically get the engine to straighten out and run right, okay? Um, I'm also going to tell you guys that these screws, of course, are the screws that go for the fuel pump. And these screws are the screws that go onto the upper and lower body. Here, 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 and here. And, of course, this gasket is just your carb gasket. Now there's several different styles of these. When you buy a kit, guys, you need to make absolutely sure that you're using the right gasket. If you don't, it can actually be a pain in the ass because if the gasket that you use covers over one of your holes here, then of course, naturally, your motor isn't going to run properly. I think I've pretty well covered all the parts, guys and what you're going to potentially find on one of these carburetors. In the next video, I'm going to show you your problem areas with these carburetors and where you potentially want to run the little pin vise that I'd mentioned to you through the carburetors and clean them. So, without rambling on guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video and I'm going to start the next video with the um, cleaning of the passages which are here here and I like to clean this as well and of course these passages as well as well as your inlet needle valve here or seat I should say seat.